Kids Reading to Dogs, how to bring the program to your child's school. Kitty Prozac, see why some cat owners swear by it. Plus, we preview Muncie's biggest party for dogs and people. Grateful Rescue TV. I'm Pamela Terhune and this is Eli and we are with my special guest co-host Nathan Lowe, That's the right. Indie Dog Whisperer. That's me. Hey Nathan, how tell me about, I'm good. good. Thank you for good. joining us. We gotta get that out of the way first and then we can talk we about do. it. We do. See how you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing well, good. especially having you with us. Oh, thank you. So tell us about Indie Dog Whisperer. Yeah, so my goal is to bring peace, right? I know a lot of, a lot of homes that I go into, there's kind of uproar, right? The dogs caused uproar and people love their dogs. They want to have harmony and peace. It's a family member, but they, how do you achieve that? Uh -huh. You have to learn to speak dog. And that's speak the dog. bottom line. You have to learn to speak dog. So my job is to tell people, how can you communicate with your dog in a way they understand so we can bring harmony to the situation? Not try to punish the dog. That's not the goal. The goal is, how do I integrate this dog into my family better? Ah. That's the goal. That's the goal. Right, Eli? Later in the show, we'll look at how Nathan is helping us with a dog named Paisley. Getting your pet spayed and neutered is vital to controlling the pet population. But many people aren't aware that failing to get your pet spayed or neutered can cause a cancer risk. I only learned that fact after I rescued a senior dog named Izzy. She's a sweet dog who unfortunately doesn't have much longer to live. Our sweet rescue dog Izzy may look like she doesn't have a care in the world, but in fact, her days are numbered. Her doctors removed a cancerous tumor, but it was too late. Now she has three to six months to live. The saddest part is that her death could have been prevented, just like many other dogs and cats that die like this each year, if only pet owners would spay and neuter. We're here at the Red Key Veterinary Clinic with Dr. Zach Wasson, and he is the Grateful Rescue veterinarian, and he has saved many lives for us at the rescue. And he is here today to talk about the importance of spay and neutering. It's not just for birth control, is it? It's a great question, Pam, and it's a very common uh, conception that I hear from people that they, they think it's good for the, the dog or the cat, but it usually tends to be a dog issue um, to let them go through the heat cycle or at least have one litter of puppies. Um, the, the reality is, is that th if you want to breed dogs and have dogs, and if you do it responsibly and ethically, that's still necessary because we want to have good dogs you know, as pets you know, for a long time to come. The reality is, is that we have a, a problem more often than not with overpopulation with pets. And so the question would be, is it just for anybody to do? And the, the reality is, is no, not really. Other than just the not having litters of puppies, the health benefits of having a, a dog spayed are, um, there can be numerous things. Uh, namely, one of the main things we see is with female dogs when they're older, uh, I see a lot of mammary cancer, you know, so breast, breast cancer basically in dogs. We do see it in cats as well. Uh, that's something that's not as common, but it does happen in, in cats who are older. Uh, what happens is the mammary tissue is stimulated every time that animal goes through a heat cycle. And so over time, that the stimulation by those hormones uh, creates a, a more likely chance of the mammary tissue developing cells that will start to uh, replicate when they're not supposed to. And that is by definition, that's what cancer is. If we're going to switch it over to the male side of things, uh, with male dogs, uh, male dogs do have a prostate, uh, and so that is something I, I do see pretty regularly uh, throughout every year, not, maybe not every month, but multiple cases a year where an older intact male dog comes in not able to urinate, uh, having uh, straining issues, or, or they may actually be blocked. And the, the issue is that their prostate's enlarged through from an inflammatory process. Sometimes it leads to infection, but unfortunately a lot of times it's cancer and that is something that um, I almost exclusively see that disease in older intact male dogs that were never neutered. Those are issues that 
uh, have nothing to do with reproduction for just the sake of having puppies, right. um, but they are health issues that we could completely avoid if we fix our pets. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that pretty much is, uh, you know, the, the big main things that I see um, in the, in the, every month, really, and multiple times throughout every year uh, of just regular clients coming in to my office, you know, that my clients and my patients that I take care of that I have these conversations all the time about. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate you because you just took one out, a uh, mass, um, memory mass out yes. of Izzy. Yes. And uh, we do see that often, and we've had some dogs, um, some males also with the with the prostate mm. problems as well. So, if you love your pets and you want them to live a good long life, get them fixed. Yeah, it's generally they they are better pets for it. That was a very heartwarming and touch, a little bit difficult, but a heartwarming story. And you are doing something to keep Izzy's legacy alive, are you not? What, what is that? We are. We're going to start a new campaign, giving mm. people awareness on the dangers of not spaying yes. and neutering your pet. Yes. And we'll be launching that campaign very soon. Oh, can't wait. I'll be looking for it. Thank you. Today on Grateful Rescues TV, I'm going to share the story of Johnny Storm, my cat who went from stressed out to zend out thanks to a recommendation from my vet for something we call Kitty Prozac. Andrew, will you read me a story? Oh yeah, let's watch Faith's Book Nook. Grateful Rescue presents Faith's Book Nook. Watch dozens of storytelling videos right now at gratefulrescue.org. When we arrived on the scene, I would run towards the fire, barking at the men to hurry up with their hoses of water. I can watch her as a bedtime story. Or anytime I want to learn about animals. Thank you for joining us tonight for tonight's book reading, and thank you for supporting Grateful Rescue. I'll lend you my daddy. I'm sure you'll agree. Now that he's home, he belongs just to me. Celebrities and pet lovers of all ages read their favorite books about animals. This is first dog, Henry Holcomb, and we have a story for you. Apparently it smells good. Story time is anytime at Facebook Nook. Watch Book Nook anytime on your laptop, tablet, or smartphone. Faith's Book Nook, right now at gratefulrescue.org. So we know the Prozac helps people, but what about pets? We're here with KJ, the kitty correspondent, to talk about Pet Prozac. Yes, would you believe that Johnny Storm in a different household may have ended up back in a shelter because of behavior mm. issues. But with a little help from our vet and what we call Kitty Prozac, Johnny Storm is living his best life. Johnny Storm stormed into our lives as a grateful rescue who immediately won our hearts and the hearts of our other rescue cats. But then one day something changed. What exactly? We don't know. But all of the sudden, our sweet little boy had become the hunter of our innocent little female cat, Melody. It is devastating as a pet parent to see two of your pets not getting along. And as your kitty correspondent and a cat behavior specialist, I was at a loss when those corrective methods that usually will help this type of behavior failed us. And when I say fail, I mean epic fail. One of those methods, calming collars, designed to relax your cats, actually had the exact opposite effect on Johnny Storm. He tore it off, he ripped it apart, and he threw it in his water bowl. He was having none of the calming collar. After ruling out health issues, thankfully, we turned to the knowledge of cat behavior. You see, in the wild, cats are both prey and predator. And even as a house cat, they walk the line of keeping that balance. Johnny Storm was acting in his natural nature of being a predator, while Melody was acting out in her natural nature of being prey. We had to find a way to help them both. That's when our vet suggested a prescription medication called fluoxetine, also referred to as Kitty Prozac, a prescription medication that has been proven to help take the edge off cats who are stressed. Seeming to be our last hope, we were very happy to find out that it was easy to administer. As you know, cats aren't always the easiest to give medicine. However, with a tuna flavored liquid made by our local apothecary, we hid it in a little bit of Johnny Storm's favorite food. And now every day he has his kitty Prozac and doesn't complain. 
Best of all, it made a huge difference. Within a month, we were able to stop monitoring Johnny Storm and Melody so much and start relaxing. Johnny Storm returned to a happy, playful kitten instead of an instinctual hunter, and Melody was able to walk our house once again free of fear. Sadly, cats like Johnny Storm are often returned to shelters, labeled aggressive and sometimes even unadoptable, when a majority of the time, the cat just needs a little bit of our help. Signs that your cat may be stressed include peeing outside of the litter box, acting aggressive, or hiding and acting fearful. Any of these signs are a good reason to go to the vet. Once they have been declared healthy from a physical standpoint, make sure you take the next step. Ask your vet to assist you in the behavior modification and stress management, and ask them if a calming medication like fluoxetine could be right for your cat. Johnny Storm is a grateful rescue, and there are more adoptable cats waiting for you at gratefulrescue.org. Mark your calendars for the second annual Grateful Fest at the Delaware County Fairgrounds in Muncie. Enjoy the pet parade, kids carnival, food, games, music, and so much more. The money raised helps Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary find dogs and cats their forever homes. Go to gratefulrescue.org for all the details. We are here with Brian Calvert and Dixie the Praying Dog, and Dixie is going to be the Grand Marshal of the Parade at Grateful Fest coming up on August 13th. Well, we're very happy to return to help out what you guys are doing for all the pups that need, you know, a good loving home. And, uh, you know, fortunately for me, I got Dixie and she was a puppy, but I know there's so many dogs out there that need rescued. So helping you guys out is my way to, to give back, our way to give back. And, and Dixie's good at it. She can, she can draw in some people for you and help you guys <laughs> raise some money for your, for your rescue. She sure is good at it. Last year we finished up the national anthem and Dixie started off the parade and just howling it was it was wonderful. Yeah so Dixie's a therapy dog for uh, veterans and kids uh, we travel around the different veterans events the, the main one is in the honor flight which they fly the vets to DC mm -hmm. and back so she helps the guys get settled in on the airplane and a lot of them are nervous about flying so mm -hmm. we go on the plane and kind of get them settled down and Dixie just does, does her thing she She'll pray next to him and she'll bark out, thank you veterans, and Aww. just just keeps him calm and entertains, and she's usually the talk of the, of the day whenever the, the guys get back. She is a blessing, and I'm sure that helps a lot with the PTSD victims. And Yeah, for sure. A lot of these guys have, have been through some stuff, and especially our Vietnam veterans, they really haven't had a chance to talk about that stuff because they don't want to talk about it. But mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. they're around their other brothers and sisters yeah. that have been there with them that they know, I've been in those situations with Dixie in those places with those folks, and some of the stories they have are heart-wrenching so for them to be able to hug on Dixie and Aww. come out of the shell a little bit is it means a lot to us you yeah know. I'm sure she is such a good dog and you'll see Dixie in August at Grateful Fest hey Brian this thing moves doesn't it it sure does you want to see Dixie I'd love to see drive, Dixie off, in drive it? off in it honk your horn <laughs> Mark your calendars for the second annual Grateful Fest at the Delaware County Fairgrounds in Muncie. Enjoy the pet parade, kids carnival, food, games, music, and so much more. Grateful Rescue is probably best known for rescuing and rehoming puppy mill dogs. Those are mama dogs neglected by irresponsible breeders and the dog's sole purpose is to breed puppies. Luckily, there are people kind enough to give these dogs a second chance at happiness. We want you to meet the Todd family. They've taken in two puppy mill dogs. And now, they're just part of the pack. I'm Jackson, uh, this is Ella, and this is Emma, my sisters, and then obviously this is Samson. 
If Samson and his young friends look familiar, flash back to two years ago when the Todd family brought home Samson on Puppy Mill Adoption Day. And you've just added to your family. We, we did. Yes, we're so excited. We um, saw him on Facebook, and I begged my husband, please, can I get this puppy? <laughs> um, he's definitely grown a lot. You know, uh, first couple days we had him, he's you know, skittish and kind of just still getting used to us. And now he's, <laughs> you know, just like any other dog you'd meet, you know. Getting rescue dogs is a big commitment, but it just really changes your life in the best way possible. It was like one of the best days ever because we got Samson, and um, but it was it was emotional because just to see what all of the dogs go through um, at the puppy mills is absolutely heartbreaking. It was a lot of excitement for everybody. <laughs> you know, I, I think that the. People needed the dogs as much as the dogs needed the people that day. You know, I, I think what Pam does in matching dogs with people is really the key to her success. Mm -hmm. She does a great job of working with the person to know the person is going to work with the dog. And I think she does a great job of that. And I think that's what happened on that day. Just lots of happy dogs, lots of happy people. Months later, the Todd family adopted another puppy mill rescue. This is Crimson. He is um, one of our rescues. Um, all of his teeth were bad, so we had to um, move them. So he doesn't really have anywhere to put his tongue. So it just kind of hangs out. It's very cute though. Grateful Rescue saved the dogs from an Amish farm puppy mill, a place where female dogs are forced to breed puppies over and over. Um, I think if you go into it with an open heart and know that they're not the typical perfect dogs, you know, they have so much love and so much personality. They really are the perfect dogs. <laughs> Grateful Rescue does a wonderful job. We appreciate so, them. You know, we, we hope that everybody appreciates them as much as we do. Um, don't forget to help out and give back, donate where you can. Um, I, I know these guys de definitely appreciate the, the help that was given to Grateful Rescue that helped them get out of the spot they were in. Yes, that's right. Dogs are good listeners, and kids improve their reading skills when they read out loud. Grateful Rescue launched the Wag the Dog Reader program, and here's a look at how it works. Today is a big pet show. Big boys. It is at the Tate School. It's in Miss Tail's class. Hey, page three, friends. Gail came with pet fish. Shane came with his dog. And we're here at Westdale Elementary with Mrs. Gina Charles, first grade teacher here, and she's been participating in our Wag the Dog Readers program. Hi, Gina, how are you? All right. Thanks. Thank you for being here. Of course. Yes, um, I wanted to ask you how you feel about the Wag the Dog Readers program. Okay, well, this is my second year to have my first graders participate in the program. I'm a real big advocate of it. I love dogs, so, and I know most children this age love animals, particularly dogs, so it just seemed like a natural fit. They would practice their reading and at the same time interact with a dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like a natural choice to me. Well, and do you feel like they have um, a more excited nature yes. on the dog days? Yes. And what's interesting to me, and I, is how they 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 take it so serious. Oh, they do. They do, yeah. and they they think, oh, I mean, they can read to me, and it's like not that big a deal, I guess. But when they're reading to the dog, for some reason, they think it's very important, and I can t I can tell they're very attentive, and they want to do their best. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, I have to say, like Gina said, this is her second year doing this and she runs a tight ship. Those children, they sit on their pockets and they behave. What's your secret? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, 20 years of experience, I guess. Um, but they, they know I take it serious, so then they take it serious, mm -hmm. I guess would be probably it. Yeah. And do you feel like they um, they enjoy reading more, that it, it uh, makes them yes. excited? About it's another it? avenue of something different for them to 
giving them a, a reason to read, Excellent. which is so important, uh, giving them a purpose to read. Mm -hmm. If they have a purpose, they're gonna do a lot better than if they're just reading just on their own. They, they, for some reason, they do so much better when they know they have a purpose. I love it, I love it. Well, do you have anything else you'd like to share about the program? I just would encourage any uh, elementary school teacher that has an opportunity to, to bring this program into their classroom. Yes, it does take it a little extra work, takes a lot of organization and you have to think it through, but doing all that, it, it, the dividends outweigh whatever you have to do to make it happen. Well, we appreciate you, you so much. Oh, you're welcome. And that is Grateful Rescue TV with Gina Charles from West Elementary. The ant had never felt so proud. We are here with Nathan Lowe, the Indie Dog Whisperer, and I've called Nathan to come out and help me with Paisley. Mm -hmm. Paisley was a backyard breeder dog. Mm -hmm. She was one of 15 and she had puppies here. Okay. And um, she is horribly afraid of everything and okay. everybody. She's afraid of noises, she's afraid of strangers. She allows me to take care of her, mm -hmm. but I think she knows she needs me. Okay. But other than that, she um, she feels uncomfortable whenever people touch her. Okay. She'll tolerate it. Okay. And so what I'd like to do is ask you your expert advice on how to kind of acclimate her to have a, a decent life. She's okay. free of the backyard breeding operation, so now I want her to try to relax and yes. enjoy her life. Yes. So I use kind of an acronym when I'm working with fearful dogs and it's HELP, okay? So the H is history, understanding the dog's history. The E is energy. What kind of energy do we need to give to this dog to help the dog calm and understand the environment is not something to worry about. L is identifying likes. What is the dog interested in? And we'll talk about that a little bit because you told me some things she does like. Mm -hmm. And then P is preventing avoidance. Okay. So we don't want to let her run from things. So first starting with H, just briefly, has she, as far as her history, has she been around many people prior to you? Prior to me, no. She was, um, she was in an Amish dark barn, just like the puppy uh. mills. She was only exposed to other dogs. Okay, so, so really contact with humans, it's not that she's necessarily been abused, she's just not used to people. Correct, that's what gotcha. I feel like. Okay, so that's, so that's a good starting point um, because we're not dealing with like um, worry about getting hit or anything like that. And right. She didn't manifest any of that. When I petted her, she didn't duck or anything. She was yeah. uncomfortable like you said, but mm -hmm. she didn't duck. Right. So E is energy and this is really important. Whenever I'm working with clients that have a fearful dog, I always tell them, you need to make sure that you model the energy you want her to have. So if you're okay. saying, oh, it's okay, ah, then that's how she's gonna feel. Okay, gotcha. So you need to make sure that's just on her side feeling that way and that you're modeling calm energy. Keep your eyes from widening. When you widen eyes at a dog, it worries them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you just keep your eyes calm and say, let's go, good, good, and just keep, I always tell people, use a voice you want your masseuse to use with you. You wouldn't want your masseuse to say, hey, how are you? <laughs> right, you say, hey, I'm trying to calm down here. Talk very even, right. very soothing. Um, and then when it comes to likes, you said, she loves faith, right? She does love faith. Mm -hmm. She, uh, when she moved into this room after mm -hmm. she had her puppies, she was forced to socialize with Faith, and and Faith isn't a big fan of other dogs herself. <laughs> but um, but she kind of made herself available okay. to Faith, and she would hide behind Faith for um, protection. Okay. And she will cl crawl in bed with Faith. Um, good. And uh, Faith allows it, which okay. is also good, I think, yes. that she's willing to share her spot with her. Yes. and so I, she does. Good, and I think, Pamela, that's a bridge. So I would recommend you do trail walks, things like that with her and Faith. Let's start getting her acclimated to things she's not acclimated to, with Faith along to prove, hey, you can be confident in the situation. Fine. I would really recommend pairing her up a lot with Faith. Okay. And then lastly, preventing basically avoidance, what you don't want to do is let her run and find a tiny space to get in. Mm -hmm. She needs to be present, but while she's present, she needs to realize no one's going to come and force her to feel any kind of panic. That's okay. a super important dual thing. So if you make her be present and then people are like, two, three people are like, hi! Now she's not, she's gonna lose trust. Mm -hmm. So she needs to be here and realize there's six people here and no one did anything. Right. That's the first level of, oh, humans don't represent any kind of threat to me, to my okay. safety. Mm -hmm. So that's the help. History, energy, our energy being modeling what we want her to do, mm -hmm. and then making sure we use what she likes to help bridge 
acclimation into things. Okay. And then preventing avoidance means we don't let her run from things. You want to put a little bit of pressure so she acclimates, but don't cause panic. That's the, gotcha. yeah, that's the key. Yep. Well, I think we're well on our way. Stay tuned for Paisley's progress. This is your new mama. Oh. <laughs> you know that she gave these to me out of the kindness of her heart, but I still got to donate something to Aww. the cause because there's Thank so many you. animals out here just running around on the streets and being abused and stuff like that. But I really love what you do Thank and I you. support it to the fullest. I affectionately call Lakeisha the dog nanny because <laughs> every time we're on set, she's over there with the dogs if we need a little sitter. I know I know you do more than that. What, yeah, what is I your do. title here? I am production. I'm with the production team but I'm also an animal lover. I love the animals. Oh my God, Stewie, that's my boo. Stewie. That's my yep. boo right there. Yep. <laughs> Patty, Mama Stewie. Patty, you done messed up introducing me to him, honey. <laughs> that's my boo. Thank you so much, Grateful Rescue, for donating these dogs to me and for everything that y'all do. I pray many blessings towards your business and your company and that you just continue to blossom and grow. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are more than welcome. Andrew, will you read me a story? Oh yeah, let's watch Faith's Book Nook. Grateful Rescue presents Faith's Book Nook. Watch dozens of storytelling videos right now at gratefulrescue.org. When we arrived on the scene, I would run towards the fire, barking at the men to hurry up with their hoses of water. I can watch her as a bedtime story. Or anytime I want to learn about animals. Thank you for joining us tonight for tonight's book reading, and thank you for supporting Grateful Rescue. I'll lend you my daddy. I'm sure you'll agree. Now that he's home, he belongs just to me. Celebrities and pet lovers of all ages read their favorite books about animals. This is first dog Henry Holcomb, and we have a story for you. Apparently it smells good. Story time is anytime at Facebook Nook. Watch Book Nook anytime on your laptop, tablet, or smartphone. Faith's Book Nook, right now at gratefulrescue.org. Thank you for watching Grateful Rescue TV. Remember, you can meet adoptable dogs and cats right now at gratefulrescue.org. You can also watch all of our Grateful Rescue TV stories on demand anytime on our website and YouTube channel. Have a great weekend. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>